Now this is a giant six inch hole saw. This is for recess cans. You can put whatever size you want on your uh, drill. I'd say more like a four inch. And the reason being, your hand has to be able to get in there and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. It has to be able to get into the hole so you can reach around in there. You're gonna put a hole in your drywall any way you say it. Why put such a big hole? Either way, it's a hole and you're gonna to have to patch. There's no way around that. So I just go big. Usually it's about a four inch, but so you can see it best. That's why I'm using a six inch for you to drill and get through. Okay, now this is the first step. So here we go. Okay, generally, if you're starting in the corner, let's say the studs are 16 inches. We don't know if they're 16 inches true or what have you, but you know, we tap around, feel the, the hollow sound, and then it gets, it gets more dense as you get to a stud. So let's just, just for instance, for all shits and giggles, let's just say uh, that we, we found the other stud. I start with a hole on right on the edge, and then so I could stick my arm in and feel to the other stud, because what if there's wire running up that side of it? So that's why I start my hole on the opposite side of it, wherever, if I have a switch down here, I start my hole up here, and I'm moving this way, I stop, start on this side, okay? Here we go. Okay, I'm off the wall a little bit, or off the edge of it, I don't wanna hit the stud. I want it to be a nice clean hole, so I can come out a couple inches from it, it's not a big deal, and I start my first hole. Put it, on, put it on low so it doesn't kick dust off all over. Maybe somebody, a friend or what have you, that taco companion we talked about in the other videos, can hold a uh, shot back to it so, so it don't uh, get dust everywhere. So, now we have our first hole. I can reach in there to the other stud and see if there is Romex running to the perpendicular to it. And then you're like, well, what about the other side? Can you drill on the other side? Well, I'll get to that in one second. Well, if we, well, how about we get to that now, all right? Let's drill on the opposite side of the other stud. Now, how do we find that stud? Well, here we go. It's always here we go. I'm sorry for, if I keep on saying here we go, but anyhow, here we go. Uh, I've got what they call an old man rule, and I don't care what they say. This is the best. It's rigid. You can hold it out and take your measurements. It doesn't bend like a regular uh, uh, tape measure. So I stick it in there, and to the edge of my hole, I got 13 inches. So I know that 13 inches is now the face of my stud. Put a little mark there. I go an inch and a half because I know studs are an inch and a half thick. They're not two by fours. They're an inch and a half by three and a half. I put another mark and I know that I'm close to the edge of the other stud now. Now I'm gonna drill that one out and I'll tell you why. Now, since I have two holes drilled out, I could fill in here, I know there's no wires. And I'm right on the other side of the other stud. I know there's no wires there. So I can go ahead and drill it out, so forth and so on. Now what I've got is my long drill bed, three quarter inch, just so I don't have to fight with the uh, raw mix when I'm pulling it through a three quarter inch. But it's about, I wanna say this one is about uh, 18, 20 inches long, I'm not sure. But I use this stick it right in that hole. I know there's no wires. And then here we go. A little dull. There we are. Let's get to the patching part. Because we're nice electricians or what have you, I do this the, elect the electrical way from an electrician standpoint. I'm not going to get my different uh, kinds of uh, putty knives out or, or drywall knives out and do the smooth transition. I'm gonna show you how to patch this and what I do and I leave it for the pros. First, uh, we get some Becker board. This is one by half or what have you. If the hole is six inches, a little few inches past it uh, because we're gonna have to grab onto this. We're gonna have to drill into this. So um, what we do is, 
put it in the hole a couple inches on top, a couple inches on bottom, okay? About center of the hole. You can do two of them, hold better. This is just to show you how we do it. Always use coarse drywall screws. They'll pull the wood in rather than you pushing on it. If you use the fine screws, you'll just be pushing through the drywall. So I get mine started about the center. One. Two. All right. We've got our wood here, our wood backer. We've got our wood backer here. And just kind of feathered in. Just feel the grab. Feel the grab a little bit. Be gentle with it. Feathered in. Just has a little indentation. Same thing with up top. Okay. Here we go. Pull it in. Let's pull it in. Feather that right in there. You could do more. You could do more if you wanted to. Put more to hold it. But it's not supporting anything. It's not a big deal. Okay. So here's our next step. We take the slug that we cut out of there. And that's what we're going to use as our patch. Now, you get a lot of people griping. They're going to say, oh, you could uh, cut it down and leave the paper on the back. And then it could cover it up. Or you could put that mesh tape. You could do whatever on it. I'm just showing you a quick electrician's hack and how I do it. It works either way. Um, mine works just fine. So I'm just trying to show you a quick drywall hack to fix these patches. I've done them where there's hundreds of holes in there. It is what it is. You're going to have to fix them small or large. So you put your uh, slug back in there. Same thing. Feather it in. One. Two. Now, we do have that gap. This is, but instead of having to put a bunch of drywall tape and a whole bunch of shit all over it, this is how, eh, my little trick to doing it to kind of help out the drywall guys at least. They always appreciate it when you've got something in there so they don't have to go and measure it out and uh, use a drywall saw to cut that square out. Then they bevel one edge so it sits in nice and they got to fill it in half inch gaps. So anyways, so now I'm going to show you just how I do it uh, to fill this, to fill this in and you're good to go. Now, mind you, you could be a nice guy and uh, fill this all in, but no matter what you do, no matter what you do, uh, the compound that you use is always going to dry and it's gonna it's gonna suck in. Even if you use tape or what have you, it's the first coat is the first coat. That's why drywall is usually at least a three coat thing. What I do is just simply fill it in. I just force it into the uh, the cracks. And over the screw holes, the screws, leave a little bit. But I don't want to leave any big globs or anything like that. Again, I don't want the drywallers to hate me. Otherwise, I run screws into my wires. They're very nice guys. I go drinking with them when I drink. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways. But yeah, I mean, it may not look all that pretty. But that drywall is going to sink in any way you say it. People say like, well, why don't you use a bigger blade and cover the whole thing? Either way, it's going to have a big ring around it, and then you're going to see the dry, uh, the uh, screw holes. So just push it in there. That's your first coat. You can come back. You don't even have to sand that. When you come over to the second coat, just get the blade that's bigger than the hole and go and feather over it. You're going to sand that one and do an even bigger blade over it, and that's how you're going to feather 